So 315 hours in three weeks. That was legitimately how much I studied for USMLE step one continuously. It was an insane grind for those three weeks. And in this video, we're gonna be going over all the tips on how you can actually sit down and study for hours on end. I can easily go over all the basic things you hear on everyone's productivity channels on how you can find a quiet place and make sure no one's around and put your phone away, put you know some nice music, do some pomodoros. You can go ahead and do all that stuff all you want, but basically this is what that looks like in the reality of things. This is me not wanting to study at all right now. And this is me applying all of those techniques that you hear on those channels. It is a quiet place. I'm gonna go ahead and put my headphones on. We're gonna go ahead and study for 15 minutes and then go take a break. Nobody's around. I'm gonna put my phone away. But guess what? I don't feel like studying. So if you're trying all this stuff and you feel like you still just cannot sit down and study and grind out hours in a row, let's get to the bottom of why exactly you cannot do that. You have to think about it. What is something you're passionate about? What is something you can sit down for hours on end? Maybe you're an artist. You can sit there for hours on end working on your painting or you're a gamer. And of course, gaming sessions, as we all know, can go on for 12, 13, 14 hours, 15 hours, 24 hours. <laughs> People, they can do all sorts of things. What is something you are passionate about that you can do for hours without being told to sit down and have to go through all these preparations? Because if you think about it, do we really sit there make sure we're in a quiet environment and get our headphones on and put our phone on silent and where we're going to sit there for a 24 hour gaming session. Absolutely not. You get there and you just do it because you want to do it. Okay. I'm just going to put my phone on silent. Hey, everyone stay quiet. I am gaming. I'm going to have to put in a six, seven hours. God, this is going to be so difficult. Now our gut reaction to this is obviously going to be like, dude, you cannot compare the two things. One is literally gaming for hours on end. The other one is studying. Studying is just lame. And I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. Hey, let's take a deeper dive. When you're gaming all those 24 hours, are you actually having a good time? Say you're playing a video game and you're going through the single player and there's obviously going to be hours on end where you're not doing anything exciting. You might be doing a side quest. You might be traveling around, but you're still grinding through it. You may come across a part of the game that you absolutely don't like, but you still go through it. Why is that? Your art projects that you're doing, you're telling me that entire time you're so excited to be drawing an art project, you're excited to be doing these finite lines of repetitive motions. Maybe you're drawing something like a person and you're doing their hair and every single line you're doing is taking hours and it's painstaking. Do you really think you are having a great time doing that? Not really. So what's going on in the bigger picture of all this? Well, here is the raw answer. He is, if you're sitting there and you're not wanting to study and you can't do it for more than one to two hours, you're not in tune mentally with what you're doing. Because a lot of us are familiar with gaming, I'm gonna use it as an example again and again in this video. So for example, if you're playing a fighting game and you're trying to learn a combo for a fighting game character, the progression to learning that combo is pretty straightforward. You understand you're mentally in tune with what you have to do. You understand what the goal is. You understand what you have to do to attain that goal. And you go ahead and grind out what's needed. You start off by learning the basic controls of the game. You start out by going online to YouTube or using a resource to figure out how you need to learn these combinations of buttons in the right method. You then practice that method and then put together the more complex combo you're trying to do. The goal is clear, the result is clear, and the path on how to get to the result is clear. And you know how to figure out that path by going to the right resources. And these conditions are met, these specific conditions are met, you enter into a state called flow. Flow can be seen at a large scale level in something like this. And new addition, Chris Bosch will be in the studio. Here's Curry's at the way up there. Well, you have 13 that you are mentally stronger than. Final seconds of the third Curry. Putting on moves against Crawford. One second left. He fires up. Or it can be in a microscopic level when you set yourself up to do a task, a daily task, a study task, an artistic project you're working on, you can set yourself into a flow. Really all this takes is three major components. Number one, the desire to really want to do something. Number two is figuring out the clear path on how to get to that goal. Number three is having the ability, the actual ability to carry out that goal. 
And honestly, the hardest part for most people is going to be that first step, the desire, the want to actually do it. I know back when I was in middle school, I wasn't that great of a student. And every single time I tell myself, I want to get straight A's, I want to do well in school. But I really genuinely didn't really want it if I go back and I'm honest with myself. I didn't dedicate myself to it. I didn't go searching for the path of what I needed to accomplish. I didn't even have a, a real clear goal of what my end result would be. The first part is always figuring out what do you want? What is it that you really want to work toward? And do you really want to work toward it? Because in the end of the day, if you don't want something for real, you're not going to go ahead and accomplish the full three steps to enter that state of flow to make progress overall. Think about the last time you wanted something, like you really wanted something and what it took to accomplish that. Did you go out of your way and look up on your own for these resources on how to accomplish this goal? This is the same kind of mindset you have to have when you want to make progress with studying. Every individual is built different. This is where I completely agree with the mentality that not everyone has to be doctors, lawyers, and engineers, and all these classic successful uh, career paths. You, Everyone is different. You have to figure out what you want or else you're not gonna enter that state of flow. You can't really get into flow with something that you don't want. So once you figure out that want, from there you figure out the path. You go down the resources. There are, the internet is just full of endless resources at this point, so nobody has an excuse on not knowing how to do something. So once you have figured out what you want, you go ahead and find the resources, and then you grind out the path. And of course, the third one's kind of self-explanatory. Your goal has to be within the ability of what you want to do, or else I can't just sit here and be like, I want to be an NBA player. I'm going to enter my state of flow. <laughs> it's not within my ability at this point. Unfortunately, it might have been sometime in the past. Then you just get to work. The hours will start building themselves up. When is the last time you did a gaming session and unless your mom is behind you with a jump ball about to hit you across the head, when is the last time you actually tracked your hours? Like, man, I'm putting like three, four hours on this gaming session. It just starts, you get into the flow. You get eight, nine hours before you know it. You've grinded out this giant gaming session. It's very similar with studying. When I was doing U Assembly Step 1, not one point did I think during the entire day, man, I've been sitting here studying for like seven, eight hours straight. That just didn't occur to me. I was just in the moment, doing my questions, going and reading my book and, and revising and doing all the spider web stuff. It was just, I was totally into it. Really all these tips that you get from all these other channels and online and data proven, scientifically proven garbage, that's fine. Uh, you know, all this stuff is answer. All this stuff is supplemental. You can do all this stuff for somebody, get in a quiet room, have your favorite pencil and paper and have your favorite brownies on the side and do your little pomodoros every five minutes you go and look at the butterflies whatever you want to do it's not going to matter in the end of the day if you don't really want it and the time is going to go by really slowly you're going to get burnt out things are going to seem very boring you have to actually find something that satisfies all three criteria of flow and enter that state of flow rather than trying to force yourself through something that is the key for true long-term successful studying and success in academics in general. And that really is how I studied three weeks straight, aside from bathroom breaks and sleeping and eating. <laughs> it was just straight studying for US Assembly Step 1 for those three weeks. I wish you guys the best with that. Get out there and get flowing. Before you go, make sure you guys hit subscribe, leave a comment if you're already doing these things or if this helped you out, I'd love to hear from you down below and we'll see you guys in the next one.